Uh, well, you just want to get to the next segment because it was your all-time favorite. Let me let me just say, I'm going to say something before we get going. This next segment is one of the greatest things I've ever seen. This is the best segment in the history of AEW. You get every emotion, every feeling you would get from AEW in this one segment. It starts off and you're like, all right, let's see where this goes. And then you're like, what the hell is this? And then you're like, oh my God, this is awful. And then it's, holy shit, where did that come from? This is awesome. And then it goes right back to, oh, it's AEW. There is so much that happens here. I rewound and watched this three times. I watched this live. I had to do something at 8.30. So I only had a half hour window I could watch one of these shows live. I chose AEW. So I watched this live as it happened. I sat at my desk. I was howling with laughter. I thought this was the greatest thing ever. I couldn't believe it. I, at first, I thought they were going to do a Cody's having an affair angle. And I was like, oh, this is going to be the greatest thing ever. This is the greatest. <laughs> but then it went in a completely different direction. And it was one of the most beautiful train wrecks I've ever seen. <laughs> and at its peak, at its greatest moments, it was fantastic. And at its worst moments, it was something I could just be entertained by. It it didn't have the 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 shock appeal, no pun intended, of the shock master, but it was really spectacularly bad television in the same vein. It was beautifully bad television. I couldn't look away. I laughed. I covered my mouth and said, oh my God. It was it was perfection. It was in, right, in, the, well, in the world of AEW. It was perfection. This is the greatest segment in the history of AEW. Well, let's explain for the folks who don't either didn't watch the program or don't watch until we talk about it so you know what to look out for. Cody has his big entrance. He's dressed in a suit. He looks professional except for the neck tattoo, but he's coming out and the music and the cheers and everything. <clears throat> and I thought this was going to be some kind of serious interview segment or something involving Cody. And, and the first thing that I wrote down was that I know we've talked about this before. I like, I like Cody's promos. Even if you think sometimes they veer into, and I agreed with you a time or two, the theatrical or maybe too grandiose in their, in their soliloquy. He he delivers things easily. He likes being out there. He's he's relaxed. I hear I hear Dusty in his cadence, if not in the actual verbiage. And by the time that I said that, he's talking and a woman walks into the ring that we've never seen before <laughs> from behind him. And you know, he realizes that she's there. And he turns around and he says, can I help you? <laughs> I was dying by this point. I was like, what is going on here? This is amazing. <laughs> because this woman, she, she, she's a tall, a, a striking looking black woman with blonde hair and a red outfit. And she's got abs. As a matter of fact, at first I thought, oh my God, it's Linda Miles. She's back. Oh, don't say that. Um, well, and the, now I don't want to, I don't want to besmirch the name of Linda Miles after I heard this promo. And this woman starts trying to talk to Cody Rhodes. And as my, as mama Cornette used to say, she couldn't say Suey if the hogs had her. She couldn't say shit if she had a mouthful. It was Big Mama, 85 Jim Crockett <laughs> level bad. I said, I wrote, oh my God. She's like, Cody, I've, I've looked for you or I've tried to find you or I've wanted to confront you or whatever. I've looked in bars. I've looked in cars. You see, that's why at the and beginning, I, I thought it was going to be, Cody, you know we've been having an affair. I was like, oh my God, where are they going with this? <laughs> well, I, I didn't even I didn't even think that because I thought, my God, I don't, I don't know what I thought, but this girl was awkward. She was gangly and nervous, had no idea what she was doing, had no business being on national television. She had memorized some shit she was supposed to say. She couldn't get her name out. I th is it Jane Cargill? 
<laughs> Why, might as well give it her, you know, fucking uh, Eustace McFinger Mang McGee. Give her something else even harder to pronounce. Von Hepper Tripper. <laughs> Von Hepper Tripper. <laughs> and with... She was trying to lay out some kind of story, and Cody kept standing there, and you could tell by mental telepathy he was trying to will her to get this out. And I just I wrote, "Why is this happening?" It sounded like the the fucking county fair speech in by Don Knotts in the Ghost and Mister Chicken. What do you know about giants? Who are giants? What are giants? Let me <laughs> clarify this. I know a giant. And just, Cody's looking at his watch, right? And JR says, well, this has been riveting. She has, in a monotonous, like, machine-like delivery, beating around the bush. Then she l finishes, apparently, what she's saying and leaves the ring. But then when she gets to the stage, she turns around and there's more. And it starts going longer. And she reveals her giant friend's name, because that's the whole thing. Is Dustin been saying, or Dustin? Cody's been saying he's a giant killer. Well, you you shouldn't say that because I know a giant. And the giant's name is Shaq. Well, nobody popped because the last thing that anybody sitting at home or probably in that building was thinking about when they're talking about giants and wrestling is Shaq. I thought she said Shrek. I thought they're they're doing a crossover with the goddamn <laughs> Pixar or whatever. And then the announcers had to jump in and say, oh, she means Shaquille O'Neal? <laughs> well, now if she'd have said that, everybody had known who the fuck she was talking about. Even on a wrestling program. Well, now everyone, if you say Shaq, everyone knows what you're talking about. I, did, I didn't get Shaq in the context of this unknown woman that's never been seen before out on a fucking outlaw wrestling program and suddenly she's going to be talking about a giant basketball player it didn't register to me i bet it didn't register to a lot of people where so did she, she come me, from think, jumped in did she hop the rail like, no where, she walked she's... out behind the <laughs> ring down the ramp yeah where did she come from <laughs> she came from the entrance way <laughs> no she didn't come from the entrance way i thought she came up from the floor i thought she came from the entrance way I like when she would just randomly pose, when she would randomly hit the double yeah, bicep. She, she, she would stop talking and just get back and flip her hair and pose because she was lost and couldn't remember what to say. So, and I bet you Cody was doing some ventriloquism. and talk about the giant. So let, uh, let me stop you real quick. Because she's now on the, I guess, the staging area. Cody's still in the ring. Cody is... Has this look on his face, like you said, like, oh my God, what is going on? And this on has taken a long time. It has gone on for so long that it went from this is bad to this is amazingly bad. Fantastically bad. And See, I didn't like it that much at that point because I've been out there on live TV for some segments when other people shit the bed and it's, it's, it just seems like forever. How many times has this happened to Cody where he gets in the ring, he gets his long, long entrance with the dramatic music that goes on longer than anyone else's music before you see him. And then he finally gets in the ring and he's on the mic for 30 seconds and boom, Jake, the snake Robert shows up. Yeah. Like, this has happened before. So she's now on the uh, entrance ramp area, the entrance way. It's not really a ramp. She's standing there. Cody's in the ring. My first thought after she says Shaq is, thank God they're going to do Shaq and Cody and not Shaq and Jericho. Thank God they didn't let Jericho latch on to this. Well, but now, do you even think, how old is Shaquille O'Neal now? He's, I would guess, at least 45, at minimum 45, maybe closer to 50. And 300 and some pounds easily and whatever the fuck. Do you think even Cody can get this done? I, I, I don't know. He's been teasing wanting to do something in wrestling forever, and I don't think he's ever actually done anything. But she's on the stage, and I'm like, this is amazing. And then somehow, somehow, <laughs> it got turned up to 10, and it became all-time classic. It became one of the greatest things ever. And it was easily the best thing at AEW. I didn't expect this. From an unlikely source. An unlikely source, and I'm not going to spoil it. I'm going to let you have this. But an unlikely source came out and delivered the promo of a lifetime. <laughs> Thank you for the handoff. Ladies and gentlemen, as this, 
Linda Miles looking woman named Jane Cargill was standing there and had dropped the Shaquille O'Neal bomb. Here comes Brandy Rhodes. And she's pissed. And she launches into old Jane with the goddamnedest promo that I've ever heard in my life. She <laughs> meant every word of it. She was cussing. She was pissed off. She told her everything that she should shove up her ass and exactly which fucking direction to do it in. I mean, it was great. And it was Brandy. And it was great. I mean, she... she her promos go from sounding like Meryl Streep to sounding like Butch Reed. That was it. It was Butch Reed 85 calling Dark Journey a heifer on Mid-South TV. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It was incredible. Incredible. Oh, so and where so did this then, come from? Where this- right then I wrote Oli, Piper, Foley, CM Punk, Brandy. <laughs> In the all-time pantheon of promos in pro wrestling. And then, as she basically told her to get her bitch ass out of her building there, that here comes Jerry Lynn to separate. Oh, no, no, uh, no, no, no. You're, you're, You're skipping over some of the most important parts. Okay, well, go ahead. Go ahead. While Brandy is cutting this, the, the, the greatest promo of her life on this woman, and totally believable and great, Cody's never cut a promo this good. No, no. This woman is standing there and she's posing and she's like, smiling. Yeah. Don't and she, <laughs> and she's not so. So then Brandy says, convincingly, you better get out of here. But then Brandy gets out of there, turns around, starts walking away, and the girl just pats Brandy on the ass. <laughs> <laughs> and that caused Jerry Lynn and all the officials to run out. Uh, and well, and that and that's the thing. If you'll notice, they pick their spots on when to run out. And they did it another time on this program. But uh, so Jerry Lynn separating the women, and then but in the then they can't leave well enough alone because <laughs> then Cody's still in the ring watching all this go on. Cage attacks Cody from behind and power bombs him, and here comes Starks, and they're kicking the shit out of Cody. Well, then Darby Allen's music starts playing <laughs> and they just freak out and stop beating up on Cody and Darby Allen is a hundred feet away. They stop beating up on Cody when the music hits for this brooding twink to walk as slow as he can <laughs> down the entire building <laughs> yeah. to get to the ring. <laughs> and then he rolls in the ring and they charge at him and he hits him with his thumbtack jacket he's wearing a jacket covered in thumbtacks everybody has one of those they were all the rage back a few years ago and you got one sitting in your closet and he hits them with his thumbtack jacket and then the fucking heels bail out and and are leaving Taz and Starks Taz is standing on the stage saying like okay all right." Yeah, Taz, you have to come on back, come on back. The, the, the guy with the thumbs, the, the 150-pound guy with the thumbtack-covered jacket just beat up my giant bodybuilder, my sexy, you know, Ricky Starks, uh, star stroke daddy. And besides the fact that they they waited for him to come in the ring, stopped beating up the guy that they were beating up and waited for him to come in the ring and then got beat up by him, then... If they hadn't blown enough heat off of these heels already, as the heels are leaving, going down the fucking tube, somebody had told Will Hobbs in the back, hey, Will, go out there and throw a chair at him, because here comes Will Hobbs, the heels are leaving, going down the fucking passageway, and Hobbs <laughs> comes out and throws a chair at him. You better get out of here. It's like the time that Heyman threw the garbage can at Ric Flair after Flair had already left the room. And everyone calls him Will Hobbs, except for Jim Ross, who keeps calling him Willie Hobbs. Willie Hobbs, baby. <laughs> Willie Hobbs, but I can hear Dusty saying it. Dusty would I call Willie Hobbs the same thing. As a matter of fact, Dusty would have, would have written Willie Hobbs on his lineups. He had nicknames for everybody, either initials or nicknames. Dennis Condry was DC Cab because that movie came out and, and Dusty saw it on a <laughs> fucking pay-per-view channel in the hotel one night. And Dennis Condry forever after became DC Cab on the lineups. Oh, awful movie. Anyway, so that was certainly a segment of renown. We'll remember that one. That was the greatest segment in AEW history. It hit every 
every like <laughs> if you're someone who enjoyed AEW, there was something for you. For me, it was everything. Like I said, it started out with okay, let's see where this is going, and then what the hell is this? And then oh my god, I can't believe this is still going. And then out of nowhere, out of nowhere, this is one of the greatest things ever. And then right back to AEW, where just unnecessary stuff is happening that makes no sense. This was my favorite thing in the history of AEW. I love this segment. I wish it would have kept going. I wish it never ended. I wish it was still happening right now. Nothing else on this show was able to stand up to this. It was all downhill from here. And you know what? I got to agree with you. You say it. It's always Cody's segments that are the greatest. This was... I don't know if they planned it this way, though, that this would be the greatest for this reason. This was the best segment in modern wrestling in, in forever. This was so good. I watched it over and over. I'm going to watch it again after we're done recording. I love this segment. I encourage everyone, go out of your way but Boogie, to see this. I've looked in bars. I've looked in cars. Yeah, this... Oh, boy. The balance anyway, of you... power changed with this segment. <laughs> Honestly, I thought this was kind of what it must have been, right? But uh, no, apparently it wasn't. Brandy Runnels having the greatest promo in the history of wrestling is this equivalent to a, a rookie golfer hitting a hole in one? It's like when all of a sudden Sonny King would hit like a great promo. Like all of a sudden Sonny wow, King. That's a, that's an interesting. That's an interesting comparison. Oh, you know what I'm saying? Like all of a sudden, yeah. Sonny King, you'd be like captivated by what he said. Yeah. And then every other time, you'd be like, oh, my God, this guy sucks on the mic. 